Political Brew. Good morning. Welcome to New Center's Political Brew. Glad to be back with you this week with John Richardson and Phil Harriman. Uh, big news out of the investigation that's been going on for over a year into the CMP metering and billing process. The staffers with the Public Utilities Commission have found that there are no systemic problems with the CMP metering and billing systems. The report finds that cold weather, higher electric rates caused a spike in bills two years ago, and that CMP should get a rate increase, although a much smaller one than it wants. However, public advocate Barry Hobbins is and buying it, neither are ratepayers groups. Uh, Phil, this is good news for CMP, it would seem, but not everyone's convinced yet. You know, it's very good news for uh, CMP. They've been claiming from the beginning that their billing system was accurate, and it sounds like, at least from the PUC's perspective, they've been vindicated. But I think the piece that's missing, and I know this from my time in the Senate serving on the Utilities and Energy Committee during electric deregulation, the price that you pay per kilowatt is not CMP based. That's a market base and those who are listening to the political brew, if you think your prices have gone up, you should go shopping for a new provider of the electrons that come through those lines. John? I, I think this is good news. I mean, they needed good news. I mean, CMP has been under tremendous assault. I think two things that have to really happen for CMP and for the public opinion to change, I really think that they need to say, we're sorry, we haven't gotten it right. Uh, we've been judged to be the worst, uh, you know, utility in, the, in America. And I think that they need to step up and say something about uh, the way they need to do business better. Uh, I think if they did that, I think if they came back to the table with respect to the issue of this transmission line and said to Maine, we're going to do better, we're going to come back, we're going to talk a bit more about what we can do for Maine, I think things would change almost overnight. Well, this is just a staff report, remember, a recommendation to the PUC, which is supposed to be isolated from politics and public opinion, but they're human beings. And in fact, one of the members is the former chairman of the state Democratic Party, who has been pretty vocal about all of this. Can the PUC reach a conclusion here that seems fair to everyone? I think eventually, as long as the public advocate comes on board, and so too do the consumer groups. I think the consumer groups are probably a little concerned uh, that uh, there is a former politician, a Democratic politician, as chair. I wouldn't be as concerned. I think he has a lot of integrity. So if he says something, I would tend to believe it unless I see something contrary. But I think that they need to bring everybody on board. They need to bring the advocate and they need to bring the consumer groups along with PUC, that would give public confidence a big boost. You know, I, I think the leadership of CMP have made it very clear that they're aware of their low public approval ratings and they're committed to doing something about it in a significant and expeditious way, and, and I do believe them. I think when it comes to the PUC, Pat, these are people who are dealing with facts and logistics and formulas. They're not playing politics. It doesn't matter who the chair of the PUC committee is. They're just delivering unbiased, factual information. Now, the uh, CMP is fighting a battle on another front, and that, of course, is the Transmission Corridor Project. The Land Use Planning Commission said this week that uh, it is allowed under state land use rules. This may well influence the Department of Environmental Protection, which has to issue a couple of permits as well. How would the referendum push by opponents play into all of this, John, and, and where, where do we stand? Well, it's good news. I mean, if those who are sitting on the fence, and I don't think there are many, if they see that LERC and also PUC uh, all have approved this, this line, then that's a good thing for obviously CMP who wants to move forward with it. But I just think that right now, main people aren't convinced this is the right way to go. And that's, it's, it's gonna take more. It's gonna be more confidence in what happens. And as I said, I think, as I said earlier, I think that one of the issues that really are uh, bothering uh, Maine people is that this seems like a pretty cheap date, that we're not getting any benefit from it. It's just a line that runs through Maine and they're not paying enough money to the state of Maine for it. And I think if they were to come back to the table, they could see, I think, overnight, um, you know, support uh, against them changes support in favor Sweeten of. the pot a little bit. Well, yes. you know, let's look at it from the regulatory point of view, which is what they're empowered to do, to say, uh, is this per project meeting the regulatory mm -hmm. standards we established? We've got the Department of Environmental Protection, the Public Utilities Commission, the Land Use Regulatory Commission. We're going to have the Army Corps of Engineers. There's going to be enough analysis, if not paralysis, from all this analysis to say they're complying. What trumps all that? Of course, the people, if they want to put out a petition and have a referendum to turn it away, they can. And I hope that the leaders of CMP and perhaps those who want to run power through those lines are preparing for what may turn into not a regulatory discussion, but a political discussion. They have everything but the people behind them. 
Uh, looking forward down to Washington, Speaker Pelosi is expected to send articles of impeachment to the Senate this coming week. Colin, uh, Senator Susan Collins says she's working with a small group of Republican senators to ensure that witnesses can be called in the trial. Phil, what do you think are the chances of success for her? I, I think they're, they're high, and, and you know, frankly, I, I do hold Nancy Pelosi accountable for this political gamesmanship or womanship, if you will, that is going on about these articles of impeachment. She should have let them go after they took the vote in the House. And if Susan Collins is working with other colleagues to say we're going to have the right to call witnesses and make this more uh, of a, you know investigative process, good, great. They, but they need to convince Mitch McConnell, not Nancy Pelosi. Correct. Correct. John? I, I think this is a, an attempt by Senator Collins to look behind the scenes not necessarily to embarrass Mitch McConnell to say we need witnesses. Now, one of the things that Senator Collins has to worry about is that if she doesn't get her way and there are no witnesses and she goes along with this impeachment process, I think she's in trouble in the state of Maine. But if she gets her way and there are witnesses who are called ultimately, I think it shows that she's a broker right within the uh, Republican Party and someone who can deliver and uh, yeah. deliver for the people. Uh, and I don't disagree with that, but be careful what you wish for, because if they're going to call witnesses, the president's going to have the opportunity to call witnesses that Democrats may not want to hear no. from. Or first hear from, because we haven't heard from any of them, because he, he hasn't let any of them <laughs> speak. Point. A lot more, point. To <laughs> more to talk about this morning on Political Brew. If I can get them to stop for now, we'll be back in the next hour to do that. New Center Maine is back after this.